Welcome, readers. Today on Book Chat, joining me is my Buddy Reads co-host, Classy Green, and two special guests from the Colored Pages Book Club podcast. We'll be discussing Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby. Stay tuned. Today's episode is sponsored in part by Audiobooks.com. Audiobooks.com now has 175,000 titles and 1.2 million podcasts. New customers get three free audiobooks comprised of one premium credit and two VIP titles. Use our promo code SHELFADDICTION, spelled as one word, when you sign up at audiobooks.com. Again, our promo code is SHELFADDICTION. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and thank you for downloading this month's Buddy Read discussion featured here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. If you're new here, every week we get bookish with book discussions, book review shelf bites, and more. If you're wondering what is a Buddy Read, this is a feature where Classy and I select a thriller or mystery title that we both are interested in. Then we have a candid conversation about that book or audiobook. We even discuss it in our Facebook group, Shelf Addiction Official, joining a live chat. So grab a glass of wine, a cocktail, a cup of tea or coffee, whatever your drink of choice is, and settle in for this fun discussion. As always with book chats, there is a spoiler alert in effect, so you've been warned. If you enjoyed today's episode, please support this podcast by sharing it with your book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. That will really help me out and I appreciate you for doing it. The uncut video version of this podcast is available now on Patreon. Join us there for exclusive videos, including this podcast after show. If you'd like to support the show in other ways, please consider doing that by supporting our sponsors. By supporting them, you are supporting us. Check out all of the sponsors at shelfaddiction.com forward slash sponsors. If you've read the book or listened to the audiobook and would like to weigh in on this conversation, be sure to join the Facebook group Shelf Addiction Official. I hope to hear your thoughts on this discussion. Links for everything I've mentioned are in the show notes, so let's get going. Joining me is the Buddy Read feature co-host, Classy Green. Welcome back, Classy. Hey, Tamara, how are you? I'm Happy wonderful. 2021. I think we yeah. did 2021, but we made it through January, so... <laughs> Happy 2021 again. Same to you. January was a doozy, man. <laughs> man, I was like, please do not be another 2020. Oh That's my all. God. So once we made it through <laughs> January, I'm like, it's a new year again. Yes, it is. Uh, we're doing <laughs> good over here, which is awesome. Good. So today, guys, we have special guests joining us for the first time. We have guests on the Buddy Reads podcast um, series. So I'm very excited. Today, Marcy and Akko from the podcast Colored Pages Book Club will be joining us. And uh, later on in the month, Classy and I will be joining them on their podcast for another book discussion. So you definitely want to be sure to check out their pod so you don't miss it. And uh, before they join us, of course, we're going to go ahead and we're going to share our book info and I'm going to share the stats. So today we are talking about Black Top Wasteland by S.A. Cosby. It was published July 14th, 2020 by Flatiron Books and Macmillan Audio, narrated by Adam Lazar White. And the unabridged audiobook length is 11 hours and nine minutes. So that was nine hours and nine minutes of fun. So Classy, would you like to share the book synopsis? I will. I am reading it from Goodreads and it says Beauregard Bug Montage. Husband, father, honest car mechanic. But he was once known from North Carolina to the beaches of Florida as the best getaway driver on the East Coast. Just like his father who disappeared many years ago. After a series of financial calamities worsened by the racial prejudices of of the small town he lives in, Bug reluctantly takes part in a daring diamond heist to solve his money problems and to go straight once and for all. However, when it goes horrifically wrong, he's sucked into a grimy underworld, which threatens everything and everyone he holds dear. All right. All right, this is exciting. We we have not talked about this type of book on the podcast. So I'm very excited. 
Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it should be a fun conversation. So I think what we can do is um, we can just, I don't know, maybe we can start our conversation and Marcy and Akko will join us shortly. Maybe high level. Did you let me, cause you know, we're going to continue this conversation in the after show guys. So yes. um, classy and I have some other things we're going to talk about in the after show as well as some news. So um, if you want to hear more about that, make sure you are a member on Patreon. So you can hear beyond the podcast and hear what we have to say, but you know, first off, you know, classy, did you enjoy the book? Oh my God, Tamara. I did. I mean, when I was done, because I finished it today. And the reason why I'm just going to say real quick, our podcasting schedule was different. And I'm like, oh, I got some time. And then I was like, holy crap. <laughs> or or if I would say like from there, um, from the book from S.A. Cosby, Mary Joseph and, you know, whoever, what is the one saying? They say Mary Joseph and Jesus or whatever. I was like, OK, let me finish this book. And I was at a nice pace, but man, it, it is a slow burn. And you know how I am with slow burns. Yeah. But even though it was a slow burn, this man's writing style is phenomenal. I mean, the atmosphere that he creates, his his words, you know, I enjoyed it. I, I really did enjoy it. Granted, I think I think when I looked, because it did have a couple of plot line twists. Um and at the 64% mark, I think that's when uh, Lazy came in with mm-hmm. the, the flip, you know, about the diamonds and you guys got to do. I was beginning to just really enjoy it. And I think I texted you and said, it has been a long time, especially with the books we've discussed, where I've talked back to a book. Like I'm at the movies talking back to the screen. <laughs> I was like, Ugh! oh, no, he didn't. Oh, my God. Why did you do? You know, so when yeah. I started doing that. I was like, this is engaging. I'm enjoying this book. So I had a good, I really did. I was smiling. Um, And like you said, we haven't done anything like this in a long time. And I felt, I won't say a kinship, but I kind of did because maybe because it was the Black author. Um, My mother grew up in the South, not Virginia, North Carolina or South Carolina, wherever he was. Mm -hmm. But she grew up in the South and a lot of the terminology or some of them just reminded me of some of the old slangs grandma and mama used to say. And, you know, it just, I really enjoyed it and I connected and not to say that, you know, our other ones, but, and I'm just going to be real. It was, I felt this thing, you know, it was like the blackness and, you know, I I really did. (laughs) I I felt it. it. I was so happy. I was so happy and man, I don't know. I just don't, I got so much to say. I, I, you know, I do. Well, I enjoyed it for a couple of reasons. One is like, honestly, I feel like I haven't enjoyed a male author like this in a really long time. So I give him credit from writing from the male's perspective, basically. You're right. You're right. Yeah, so I really enjoyed it. And it was a slow start for me, but I feel like once things got going with the first heist, I was like, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. (laughs) And I was feeling all the Fast and Furious vibes mixed with like, you know, any heist movie I've seen. I felt like I was watching a movie. Well, didn't they mention like Ocean's Eleven in there? So it was just like all that, you know, blended. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was very enjoyable. It was a nice change of pace. And going into it, I didn't know what to expect because I'm like, you know, I don't really read a lot of books that take place in the South per se. I don't really, you know, I wasn't really sure what I was going to get, but it was a pleasant surprise for me. And I really enjoyed it, especially all the way up through the end. I'm like, oh, 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 okay. (laughs) I don't know about you, but like, um, when they did their first heist with Ronnie and Reggie and they put on, um, you know, he said, is there any music in this car? And he hit Annie up. I don't know if you know that song <laughs> by MOP, but yeah. then I was like, let me go listen. Girl. I was like, yes, let's go. <laughs> you know, Annie up, kidnap that fool. I was like, Oh God, it was, it was fun. 
You're getting all the feels. <laughs> Man, I really did. I looked up that song. I played it on YouTube and I was like, that's like the perfect song mm-hmm. for a heist. You know, I think yeah. they even mentioned about get the diamonds and all that. And I was like, this man, yeah. it, it is homework. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah, it was good. Um, so I hope that our guest, our special guest today enjoyed it as well. We'll be jumping into that conversation momentarily. Um, so yeah, I just, uh, it was a it was, nice it was a breath of fresh air. Yeah, it was. Because usually when we start these podcasts, it's like, okay, here we go. We got some things to talk about. Right. Yes. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, guys. But this yeah. one is a different hold on. Yeah. Yeah. I really could feel like it was a movie. And if I had the time, because like you, I kind of wanted to wait so that it was really, really fresh. So yeah. I didn't finish this until like, I don't know, eight o'clock last night. Okay. Um, but if I had the time, if we had had time to converse more about it, I think I would have tried to cast it. This yeah. would have been a good, because I could see it. As a movie, it could be yeah. a movie. Yeah, maybe we can cast it and you just post it on the, the website, maybe. Yeah, maybe we could. Yeah, maybe we do that and maybe start a conversation somewhere, you know, with the Facebook group or something. Mm-hmm. Hopefully some people read it. But, but you know, this book is just, or, and I know they're coming in soon. Um, I know a lot of people uh, do cast too on Goodreads. Maybe we could like post it there. That might start a little conversation, mm. you know, where they post. I've seen people cast and put like little photos there. Yeah, I'm down for that as well. Yeah, because um, this book has been read a by a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's been read by a lot of people and selected as what like best thriller or whatever the year. I think it even got an audio audible or audio award as well Mm -hmm. yeah yeah well definitely i'm down for it but for sure and shelf addiction official will definitely start the conversation there and we always have a live private book club about you know in our group and we'll be talking about this book at the end uh toward the end of february i should say so Mm -hmm. make sure um you're part of the facebook group i think this actually airs after we talk but Mm -hmm. join us and you can get us for the March book, you know? Yes. Cause we talk about this, I think the Saturday before it airs, usually depending on how the month falls, you know, depending on how many days are in the month, Yeah. but it's either the Saturday before our episode airs or the Saturday after. Right. Marcy and Akko have arrived to the chat. So we will take a quick break. And when we return, they'll be talking about this title with us. Stay tuned. Welcome to the show, Marcy and Akko. So nice to be chatting with you both today. Yes. Thank you all so much for having us. Yes. I'm so glad we were able to put this yeah. collab together. It's going to be fun. I agree. Mm, yeah, I'm like, yeah, we're excited. I'm super hype. Also, I must say, like, your setup is, like, really nice. Like, this book, like, fairy lighting setup that you have going on is, like, very, very cute. I, like, very much appreciate it. If you're listening to the to the podcast, you can... You can't see this, but like if you're watching it <laughs> on, on the Patreon, you can see. But yeah, love the setup. <laughs> oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so I would love for you both to introduce yourselves and share a bit about your podcast. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm I'm Marcy. Um and <laughs> Ako is the other half of this podcast. And basically our show is yes, yeah, so it was Color Pages Book Club. It's a bi-weekly show where we talk about fiction, fantasy, and magical realism written by writers from colorful backgrounds. We like the term colorful because it's you know, diversity kind of, you know, it, it, it can imply a very much in-group, out-group kind of sort of imagery, whereas like colorful really kind of seems to encapsulate sort of the the magic that comes from, you know, folks that are typically kind of underrepresented in these different forms of media and stuff like that. But anyway, so basically, we, like on our show, <laughs> um, we take a book a month and we'll basically just kind of like split it up in half and talk about it. So it's like, we'll talk yes. about the books, we'll get the plot summaries, we'll like give our thoughts and feelings, but also just kind of use the books as a way to talk about our own personal lives, key, key, catch up, like mm-hmm. we've been friends for a minute. So it's like, it's a lot of us just like kind of, <laughs> <laughs> hanging out oh sorry i want to ask can, can i cuss on the show or like yes you may yes okay so it's kind of just like, sort of like bucking around. Yeah, so you like haven't listened around to this show them. have you with me and my f-bombs <laughs> no i just i just know you know like being a guest i'm like let me ask like i want to yeah, that's true you know <laughs> right. you do need to ask that's right. true i get that i respect that marcy yeah. i respect yeah. that but thank you oh we let them fly 
<laughs> oh, the, the, delicious. Can't wait. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of like a quick little, little spiel. Aqua, was there anything else you wanted to add? Yeah, I think that um, one of the main tenets we sort of try to emphasize is imagination as this sort of revolutionary force mm. and what it would be like to interact with things as people who are not uh, the hegemony. Oh my God, I said hegemony again. My, <laughs> the listeners are going to be like, why does she always say that word? But, um, we, you know, as people who aren't that reacting to things that aren't that. And so what is it like to have these black bodies who talk about, you know, Southeast Asian literature or or mm. uh, Asian American literature or African literature and, and, and reimagining the lens we see the world and the conversations that we can have and just reimagining imagination itself and that's kind of what we love to do together <laughs> Ooh, period yes awesome. yeah. how long have you guys been podcasting together oh my gosh um yeah we just talked about this yeah actually. like we're almost <laughs> at two years like uh-huh. we started march 13th of 20 oof, not me 19 yeah 2019 oh my gosh yeah, yeah so about two years. But it's so funny because before that, I mean, we were planning this for like months. Like we were like, oh my God. Oh yeah. my God. It was like this whole thing. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> like, I, like at the time we didn't live in the same city, but they were like close to each other. So we would like just travel and like have like podcast meetings and like stuff like that. It was like, right. a whole project, but yeah. But it was very about fun. Podcast yeah. meetings. That sounds like a party to me. I'll be up there drinking and having a good time. They're like, oh wait, were we supposed <laughs> oh, to podcast? Was. Oh my God. <laughs> Absolutely what happened. Um, she caught us. She caught us. Right. What happened? <laughs> Like, oh, we had meetings, girls. <laughs> meetings. Anyway, uh, <laughs> mostly key, and then you know, talk about the podcast for a little bit. But right, yes, that's book yeah. club, right? So yeah, yeah book club, was, right? True, it's true. Like yeah, we read this book, but <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> yes. right. My glass is empty, swirling around in the glass with ice. <laughs> You know, and it's funny, usually I do have a little something to sip on, but you know, mm. so early in the day on a Saturday, I mean, on a Sunday, excuse me, it's Sunday, you guys, when we're recording. <laughs> so I'm like, I just have my little water. There we yeah. go. <laughs> Marvin, it, it is five o'clock somewhere, but yeah, I, yes. I, I, I get it too. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, Tamara, like, what? You know, you go reach and I'm like, it's not a wine glass. Yeah. It's my water tumbler. Oh. <laughs> yes, we have be a little, insane. We do our little libations sometimes while we eat podcasts. Oh, yes, it, it relaxes us. We get into it. It's a thing. Mm. It's book club in here. It's book right. club. Yes. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, what about y'all? Like, have y'all, did y'all podcast like before, or sorry, did y'all book club before your podcast? Mm. Well, wow. unfortunately, we don't live close together, but mm. we, have like we met at a book like thing and we've been like book best ever since mm. <laughs> it was like we clicked oh, yeah it, yeah it was crazy and when I first met her like we saw her and you know when mm. you're in a place and you see another black person you're just like <gasps> oh, <a sign. laughs> and, and in our hotel we were trying like, who's you know who's at the is going to the book event and we happened to mm-hmm. see her like go towards the shuttle and we were like should we kind of talk to her because mm-hmm. hey mm-hmm. you know we're it was either myself or alicia and we were like we're gonna be over here you want to join us and mm. you know and she was kind of like hmm I'll think about it. <laughs> no, <I'm> like, <laughs> she did. And then before, I don't know what happened. I don't know if we connected afterwards or when we went out to dinner. But ever mm-hmm. since yeah. then, we've like always, we've connected in somehow, some way. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it. I yes. really like that. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been podcasting. Um, she joined me on the Buddy Reads feature where we do mostly thriller and suspense and mystery. She joined me here. All, it's been almost two years. We've yeah. been doing Ooh. this together. So, yeah. Because I reviewed books for you because you were, yeah, yeah. I, I was like on her review team. I would review books for a website and then mm-hmm. switched over to her podcast. Yes. And haven't looked back. She is the no, bomb.com hey, on this podcast. Yes. <laughs> man, the struggle is it. real. I'm not used to this. I'm old, man. But I'm learning. <laughs> and she works with me. <laughs> Y'all, she surprised me. Like, she came back and I'm like, you got a professional mic? You got a screen cover? What's going on? I'm like, hey. yes! <laughs> hey. That's called having millennials in your life. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> we love <to> see it. <laughs> my children got me this 
Yeah. Yeah. So oh, that's, that's so sweet. Yeah. yeah, that's our story. So yeah. let's talk mm. about this story, you guys. Shout. Oh my God. <laughs> Blacktop Wasteland. Okay, Ooh. let's jump in. Did you, well, first, did y'all like it? Did you like it? I did. I was like, it's so interesting because like, I mean, okay, this is like almost going to sound like Shay, but like, this was like the first time in a long time where like every time I put down the book, I was like, but like, what if I read 20 more pages? Like, I just like could <laughs> not stop. Like, it was just so like, it was just like the, like the, the, like the motion of everything. It was just so fast paced. It's like, oh yeah. It, it, like I, I read this way quicker than I thought I would. Like, yeah, it was definitely, Good. I will say as far as like, you know, some of the character dynamics and things like that, I was like, oh, could have, could have not done that but like all in all like just like as like a literary experience like a reading experience like i was like oh this is like really interesting and also kind of nuanced and like offers some like you know interesting critiques that we can talk about um or or rather commentary that we can talk about but but yeah i liked it yeah good i really liked it until the end Mm, the beginning i was super super into it i was like this is so interesting and then for the last 50 pages i was like everyone is doing too much. Oh no. <laughs> Everybody. Oh no. <laughs> um so I was like, oh my God. But maybe I just maybe my heart was broken and that's what was happening. And I, I was hoping for a happy ending. Which why would you hope that? Like you knew that wasn't gonna happen. But so mm, I right. loved the pacing until I got to the end and then I was like, okay, I still really like this. Cause as Marcy said, like it kept me engaged most of the oh, book. Yeah. So I think I was like, yeah, I'll knock it down like one star less than I would have. Oh, well, you know, I have to admit, I like a realistic ending. I do. Like Mm. sometimes a happily ever Mm. after is cool, but sometimes it's refreshing to be like, oh, wow. Okay. (laughs) That's what's up. Like, okay. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And I felt the same way almost with the ending. But then when you realize his conversation with his wife. You think about that conversation he said, even with um, Booney, where he said, I was bug and I was Beauregard. And for mm-hmm. me to be with my wife, who no longer wants to have, you know, that that call mm-hmm. that right. my husband yeah. is dead and I have to um, bury him or, you know, or what happened to his son. Mm-hmm. And it was like for him to do what he needed to do. It had to be, you know, there was a lot to do, to be done. And he had to realize, is this what I want? But then in the end, he was like, I'm not even sure. So right. that's how I felt too, like a eh, happy ending, but I knew it wasn't going to be a happy ending just based upon his life and the things that he did. Cause I'm thinking to myself at the end, you guys, you came to my house, Ooh. you shot up, you shot mm-hmm. my child. Mm-hmm. My mm-hmm. older son is in jail. Cause he had to load up. You motherfuckers are gone. I'm sorry. I just yeah. put myself yeah. in their shoes yeah. and I'm just oh, like, I'm going damn. ham. Everybody. <laughs> I'm ready for the smoke. Let's go. Right. Yes. And I mean, yeah. for real, is he going to get away with what he did? Like, let's keep it real. I mean, he yeah. killed people. Are you going to get yeah. away with that? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. He did yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. thinking back to at the beginning when he I went that he like waited at the bar for that person from the uh for the drag race to show up. Um like the car drag race. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh Warren. Then, like, <laughs> Thank you for the clarification. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, picture. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Warren, yeah, yeah. Um and then like beat him up. I was like, Ooh, you know what? This is we're seeing two like you said, there's a bug and there's a bull regard and uh, mm-hmm. man, mm-hmm. this is Jekyll and Hyde have to, you know, come together at one point, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I mean that's come out too before when he when the people came um to accuse him of burning down their um business. Mm. He, mm-hmm. he beat that guy. To, I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. Which business? You know when the when he precision. when the other business precision burned out. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. And they came so, to confront him, mm. and he said he just jumped on them. Like, damn. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And yeah. Calvin was with the shits yeah. too. He was like, oh, so I will hop in. And I was like, oh, yeah. right. y'all, y'all don't give a fuck at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> just right. Like, no. Period. Oh uh, yeah. And like, do you think they'll call the cops? No, they call the yeah. cops. Oh what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> Why would you think that? Yeah. And then you know, uh, it was like a a webinar or something like a Q and a with essay Cosby I listened to. 
Mm-hmm. And he said in those like little small country back road towns, he said, it's not a matter of who did it. It's who's going to tell and how can you prove it? They know mm-hmm. somebody did it. People mm-hmm. don't talk mm-hmm. back there and how can you prove it? Yeah, I right. killed him, but prove it. So, right. you know, when, when I saw that and then when I read the book, I was like, yeah, because mm-hmm. I mean, you think about it, it's probably a, in all them, those woods is like. You know yep. how many people, right? And not only did he kill them. Remember, Mr. Chompy ate them up. So prove it. Yeah. <laughs> mm, <laughs> They're that's paperweights. <laughs> They're paperweights yeah. now. So Ooh, that's yeah. something else. Yeah. Find the body and prove it. And also, too, I mean, Ronnie and Reggie like did like don't really have the profile where they're like oh my gosh police like you know like i feel like (laughs) they kind of let a life where it's like okay like even if they did go missing or whatever like it's like you're not really gonna be on the police's radar like that to like really investigate what happened right Um, yeah nobody's looking for you nobody yeah yeah Yeah. not at all when that turning point when everyone was watching TV and realized that no one had said it, the robbery had actually happened, and everyone's like, that's worse for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh no, y'all, we're in it deep. Like, <laughs> right. It was an attempted robbery. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. We just stole a box right. of diamonds. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Somebody doesn't want to know uh, other people to know that there were diamonds. And I was like, oh mm. shit. It's, yeah. about, it's about to go down. Oh. We're in trouble now. We just stepped it in it. <laughs> yep. Ooh. Yeah. I think up until that point, I was like, okay, it's a robbery. Like, you just have to outrun the police. And then when that happened, I was like, oh, no, there are worse things out there than the government. I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Thanks yeah. And then they did. Oh, my God. What was her name? It wasn't Jenny. It Jenny? was like Jenny's, like, um, they were, like, they were talking. Um, the oh, Lisa, the her boss. The one yeah. who's getting, I think her name was Lisa, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Like the way they did her, it's like, mm. so she literally got whole ass like shot during this robbery. And y'all just like, yeah, burned her house down with her in it. And like, so it was just, I was like, there was just, yeah. oh, my, oh my God, the violence. In this I book. mean, Jesus. they ca- they tortured her and then just burned her up. I'm like, damn, that is cold, man. Like, cold. Yeah. <laughs> like really uh, and yeah it, but, they did it so politely yeah. i was like that's southern hospitality <laughs> yeah. my god right. you are so right <laughs> it was done it was politely done <laughs> he's like i knew her the longest i'll do it i'll take care of it right. like what right. and <laughs> and I, just i'm like, gonna watch her burn oh yeah oh my god i was like oh okay god. and that was burning man so at first it was like burning man then i was like oh so, because yeah, he likes yeah. to burn. I, wow, He's a little yeah. pyro, you know? Mm-hmm. But yeah, they did do it and they, they did it wrong. But, you know, when you open, when you run your mouth, that's what happens in that Ooh. life anyway. You know, and I think yeah. we tend yeah. to forget that it that stuff does exist. It's, yeah. it's just yeah. that crime life. Um, I don't know it. I they never want to know it. I'm sure. I know. Where they say <laughs> snitches get stitches, but, you know, yeah. it, it, it's true. She told one yeah. little one she little told one girl she was crushing so what, on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Trying to mm. impress her and look what it got her. Like, man. Ooh. And they didn't even cut her any slack for lying to the police and covering. Like, she did right. not rat anybody out. Like, you didn't even cut her any slack at all. No. No. Right. She shouldn't have got any slack. Diamonds. <laughs> that's my, you playing with my money. Yeah. That's those are the two don't play with my money, my children, and my man. And they you play <laughs> she played with my money. That's how I thought of it. Okay, Shade. Okay, Shade, my- we got you. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> that I will tell you that. Don't yeah. play with my money, don't play with my kids, True, and don't play with my man. True. I'm sorry. <laughs> just, just, just those three the, things, right? Ding, ding, just not. three things. But I, I get it on all three accounts. I kind of agree. I'm not going. Yeah, lie. And, <laughs> I mean that was that was a yeah. that was a lot of money. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. But yeah. then I'm like, how did the, the, the bad guys even get that money? Because I, you know, ill gotten gains are, you know, lost very easily. I'm just saying, like, yeah, how did they get those diamonds? They're not good people. No. So I was like. Mm-mm. No. I don't mind if they lose their money. No, because yeah. I mean, Lacey was like trafficking girls. Right, yeah. exactly. Wait, what? Ooh. I'm sorry. Not you me for details. Wait, I did yeah. not. Wait, what? 
Yeah, yeah, he was saying how he was messing up his flow, like his flow of money, because he yeah. was using that place, I think, to like exchange money and something yeah, to he like was train some it. girls. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was, he yeah. was money laundering through that, yeah. you know, through the um, yeah. jewelry business. Because, yeah, oh he was trafficking, God. was it like college girls or something in that oh. little community to the government officials? And, you know, so no. it was. He was How? A smart- uh, maybe I was reading too quickly because I'm literally like, wait, what? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. that's like, okay, wow, that is. Yeah, he had a few other atrocious. businesses, but he lost yeah. the jewelry store. So that mm-hmm. meant if he lost the jewelry store, he couldn't launder that money from the money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from the uh, trafficking business. So, mm-hmm. so he was losing. Yeah, it scared his some a of lot his of accounts away. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Because yeah. I mean, what we wind up seeing him basically at like a. I'm going to say a tasty freeze, but a little like 7-Eleven mm-hmm. behind the register, right? Wasn't he like a cashier when when we saw him because some lady was buying cigarettes? Remember Lazy was um, there? Wasn't that him? The lady? Okay, don't get me wrong. You know, I will mess. I remember that one scene with Reggie being at the convenience store, but that was like... No. That was another... That was a whole separate thing. I'm yeah, because remember. remember Lazy was at this... He was at some store and a lady was buying cigarettes and he said she had her oxygen tank and she and he was like yes. that would be so and so this mm-hmm. amount of money and then he said his uh the burner phone started ringing yeah i was like I wow this. does okay. he have another mm-hmm. business because remember he said oh. i'm broke yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. he's like i'm broke i um mm-hmm. you know i need that money because i mm-hmm. oh you know uh beauregard called him and he said i got your mm-hmm. platinum or i need you know mm-hmm. he's like i got bills to pay and i was like Right. Either that's another business or he's that damn broke down. <laughs> but I thought right. he was that broke that he was a cashier. <laughs> but yeah, but that just goes to show how many businesses he possibly had. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. 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 Dirty. And he's he wasn't and even like the top level like boss. Like there was someone right. bigger than him. Right. Yeah. Him yeah. and Shade was were they like at the same level or was was Shade kind of like running things a little bit? I feel like they were like more rivals, right? Lazy yeah, they, I think they try to put portray them as rivals. Okay. But I only believe. because Lacey wouldn't give in. Because if I remember correctly, they said Shade came in and took over all these little smaller syndicates in the area and Lacey mm-hmm. wasn't going for it. So he right. was like pushing right. back. So Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't join the, yeah. gr- the group. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, I will say this is like kind of petty, but like lazy i don't know like when he was like introduced and given like you know when they got like beauregard kwan and um ronnie in that room and they were like interrogating them and stuff i was like okay you're very much like a disney villain like it was just (laughs) it was almost like cartoonish (laughs) like he was like giving these like weird puns from these like action movies in the past and it was just like twirling his mustache and i'm like we are doing so much like it's like you're so animated like yeah i mean he was he was like a a straight up baptist preacher but, you know, and that's probably because mm-hmm. of they they said his name was, you know, Lazarus. But, yeah, he mm-hmm. was. He was giving me straight up evangelical Bible Belt Baptist preacher, mm-hmm. a.k.a. slash Disney. Yeah, he, he was. <laughs> it was. It was very animated. Um, it, it, and you, it almost you all wanted to know more, excuse me, wanted to know more about his background because and I oh, think definitely. they right. did say that he was a, a very intelligent young man. He was like it almost seemed like they made it seem like he was a science major. I'm thinking engineering or something mm, like that yeah. mm. who kind of got into this mm. business. So he was, you know, cause mm. he was smart. Cause he realized that Beauregard was way smarter than they mm-hmm. um, yep. believed him to be. So everybody else thought Ronnie, who I really don't know why was the brains of the, <laughs> right. of the, of the <laughs> what gave y'all <laughs> that impression? Yeah. White. Cause you know, they said they were some racist bigots. Yeah. So, you know, they would probably take the white man over the black man. Mm-hmm. So, Absolutely. and that was something that I did like about the story is how he kind of used those kind of um, things in the story to deal with, yeah. you know, he used the, the prejudice and the racial uh, bias and things mm. in yeah. this thriller without uh like banging it over our heads that look mm. we're talking about racism and we're talking right. about trumpism but you know he kind of threw right. it in there there's so much going on already like we didn't need to be beat on the head with it i mean no, no not at no. all yeah yeah 
Yeah. Um, but it's also just like built into the world building, like into the mm-hmm. tapestry of the story. So you're like, yeah. it feels very realistic. You're like, oh, yeah. yeah, this is how it would go down. Like, just because that's how it is. Mm-hmm. Not because, I mean, there's a message behind it, but the message is that this is real. Yeah. <laughs> this is what would happen. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I've- and, and even how that intersects with like, why Beauregard kind of went back to like the life and everything. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like, he has this business with this competitor and like, you know, this this other this like white owned business that like you know there is that racial bias that like makes yep. people sort of frequent their you know their business. Beauregard's suffering economically; he doesn't really see many options here. Mm-hmm. So yeah. he's like, you know what? Like, let me just get this money real quick, and then it's just like it, it's like this whole then it just it crescendos into violence. It's just it. I feel like the the social yeah. through lines and like kind of the 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 reasons like around crime and kind of like crime as like a phenomenon I thought was really well done because I was like oh like this isn't just some like random we just love this it's like oh right like this is compulsory we're pushed into this we've been forced into this like true Mm -hmm. forced into it honestly right yeah and he kind of tumbled down a rabbit hole because he went back to racing because he felt you know his back was against the wall he's like I know I can make this quick money I can do it let me just make this money and it just right tumbled down this horrific trail right. that you did not right. expect You're right and the craziest yeah. thing is if oh boy if reggie did not give him up or uh rodney i can't remember which one if they didn't rodney. give him up he would have never been involved he would have yes. had his money and carried on uh, yeah it's true although yeah. i think oh, that's i think that's what i'm right kwan oh kwan yeah Quan. probably yeah, yeah. The mm-hmm. one who got his butt whooped by uh, yeah, it was <laughs> Klein, he, the was, he yeah. was very petty, so that was oh. him for sure. I don't okay, yeah. this, okay, no shade. Okay, I'm not even gonna say no shade because it's a shade. But like, why was Quan <laughs> there? Like, I didn't understand. Like, Quan being part of the operation just seemed. I was cool. like, you seem like the least equipped to like handle to the, do this like, yeah. robbery mm-hmm. and like the subsequent actions. Also, Beauregard mm. told y'all very clearly when we rob this. When we rob the store, I'm gonna need y'all to be sober, yes, and just mm-hmm. with it together. And, and like Ronnie's like, yeah, the coke was really hitting when I got in the store, and I was like, girl, <laughs> like <laughs> one, jo- one, just, yeah. one job. Oh my god, yeah, he was like his, he his senses you. were heightened. <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah. And like Quan's over here trying to like hold the store down and like is in Neverland. Like, I don't know what yeah. was going on there. It was right. just a yeah. mess. A Both mess. of them were high. Both of them were high. Yes. And it was like, are you mm-hmm. kidding me? But Quan was there because it was a two man job. Right. You know, and Beauregard was the driver. He wasn't doing nothing, anything else except for driving. But they right. needed Quan in there. Like you said, his one job was to cover the two people in there. But right. he over there just looking out into space and here comes Lisa. <laughs> With her gun, toting self. Like, oh my and not God. a little gun. And not a little gun. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? If you had a little gun, he could Ooh. possibly, I could possibly say, I didn't see it. She was quick. She got a big old, a big oh, gun. Right. <laughs> Lisa basically was like, I'm going to now get my gun. And Quan's like, what? Like literally, <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you might as well. Like, she pretty much announced it. Right. And Quan was like, I don't know how we got here. And I'm like, sweetness, honey. Yes. What? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Right. Look at how you behaved. What? Right. Oh, yeah. A mess. Yeah. I can't. But, yeah. But that that was the Oof. only reason why Quan was there. And you know, <laughs> he was what, like a a fellow criminal. And half the time, most criminals when you're in jail, and I'm just saying this because I have some relatives who, <laughs> who live that life. <laughs> mm-hmm. You owe people favors when you're in there. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and I can't remember if he did say that, but, you know, you kind of owe people. So, yeah. okay, I owe you here. That's I got true. this job. Yeah. Right. You know, you think about with Kelvin, even though that wasn't money, but, you know, um, which was uh, Beauregard's cousin, he was like, I owe you because you did this for Caden. Right. And I don't know who Caden right. was. Um, but, you know, it, it was like that, um, you know, you pat my, you uh, scratched my back, I scratch yours, I cover yeah. you. And it is, again, that lifestyle. It yeah. is. It's a downward spiral yeah. that becomes a domino yeah. effect, and you really can't trust anybody in that life. Mm. And, and I think that was one of Beauregard's uh, downfall, which was one of a turning point where my emotions got really crazy when um, Ronnie shot Kelvin. Oh I my god! Yeah, I knew. That, oh, I knew. that Ooh. was so bad. Yeah, I lost it. I really did. Yeah. I was going to the basement, putting laundry yeah. and I'm walking down the steps and I stopped and I said, what the f- yeah. just happened? Yeah. And I hit rewind because it was like, you know, he got shot and all of a sudden his head and I'm like, who 
shot him. Shot him. Shot him. You yeah. know, and I'm I like, I know like, Ronnie and Reggie didn't. Right. Yeah. Right. I just know they didn't turn on these two guys. But when yeah. when right. Beauregard said Ronnie was whistling a song, he didn't They were know. ready to go. Oh, my God. Man. That part got me, too. I was like, damn, what the? Damn. Like, if you call like that, <laughs> right. like, damn. Okay, wow. Yeah. You're going to regret that. Right, because <laughs> Calvin was it. like, right. I don't think I shot, you know, the driver. I think Ronnie or Reggie did. And, you know, he's getting them credit, and all of a sudden, yeah. he gets shot. Yeah. And I was mm. like, oh, my Ooh. goodness. And, and just that just like, shows the show. And Beauregard had mentioned that it was something. Oh, because he said um, Ronnie didn't tie up the driver right. And he's like, I wonder if he did that on purpose. And then he was like, yeah, that's mm. a checkers move. I mean, he's like, that's a chess move. And Ronnie is more of a checkers right. guy. Yeah. And then it hit me <clears throat> that Beauregard didn't listen to his dad's advice. He was like, always trust your gut. Always right. trust your gut. And he didn't trust his gut right there. Because, you know, yeah. the, it, also, Ronnie, Ron, Ronnie's a two-bit hustler. Right. Why wouldn't he? And then he thought about it. Hey, he kept saying, you're going to keep him alive? And lo and behold, yeah, he didn't trust his I gut. Also, I don't think they, like, because we knew Ronnie's motivations. We knew Ronnie was really did not want to be quote-unquote white trash anymore like he would do anything but that but Beauregard doesn't know that and I think back to Marcy your point about the racial element like I get the feeling that lower socioeconomic white folks do not like that place to be in that place and then you realize Ronnie might be playing checkers but you don't know his motivations right and his motivations it will drive him all the way to the edge. So when I also didn't think he was going to shoot Calvin, but then afterwards when he's talking to Reggie and Reggie's like, we're always going to be trash. Like this isn't yeah. you killing these people and doing this is not going to change our background. But I was like, man, he's like the great Gatsby, except he didn't come up. I was wow. like, yeah, yeah. I he just didn't want to be I poor. Thought... He didn't want to yeah. be poor anymore. But you yeah. know, though, if, if Beauregard was thinking, he already found out that they shorted him money. Mm-hmm. So they already right. found out at that yes. point, this dude hit yeah. a lot of money. And all he mm-hmm. could think was, well, I got my part. But actually, you didn't. You didn't yeah. get your part. Right. Right. Nope. Yeah, because he robbed you. He he robbed you the last time. He still owed right. you 3000 from another job. Right. <laughs> right. You know, right. He's so dirty. Right. So Ooh. why mm-hmm. wouldn't he? do something else to double cross you for the money. Why exactly. wouldn't you think right. that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I it's, think he was just yeah. thinking we need to get lazy off my ass. I need to get lazy off her because he's a dangerous man. But I do want to dovetail off of Akko's uh, statement about um, Reggie. You know, all this time they made Reggie out to be this little special brother who can't do this, mm-hmm. this and that. And when they got in that car, and that little monologue that you mentioned, Akko, about mm-hmm. he was saying, well, all these be white trash. Did you not see? He's like, did you check and see if Bo was dead? Did right. you know? He, he was like, he, right. and I was like, here he we're did. thinking Reggie is, is the special one. And that monologue just showed that man is a lot smarter than you guys mm-hmm. think. You know, he was like, yeah. everybody that trusted you, where are they now? They're dead. They're dead. Yeah. Right. You know? And what then, was his response? Well, they're not my brother. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 And in the end, brother died too because, you know, they trusted Ronnie. And yeah. I know in the story, S.A. mentions, uh, S.A. Cosby mentions, uh, I think when he got to the point where him and Ronnie were talking, and Ronnie does mention that he didn't want to be poor, he was like, life without money is no life. Mm-hmm. And I really love this line where um, S.A. says, uh, my uh Ronnie's avarice to my hubris and mm-hmm. and that's you know like yeah. hubris is a, a mythical word uh well I know they use it in mythology but hubris is extreme or foolish pride or dangerous and overconfident that was Beauregard mm-hmm. avarice which was Ronnie excessive or insatiable desire for wealth or wealth gain or greediness and I was like yeah. this man can write damn it yeah man because this man you know and that's what uh uh, tamra and i were talking about before you guys got here like we've read Mm -hmm. a lot of uh male writers in this genre and a lot of times we feel like they don't get things right like they don't write the female characters right or you know you don't have that connection and Mm. this man i felt it. it yeah man 
there hasn't been a time where I felt such emotions and a connection. And I was telling her, I was like talking back to the book, like I'm at the movies or, you know, watch it. You know, I was like, no, what the hell? What were you thinking? Did you check to see if the driver had a cell phone while you're driving? You know, those type of things. And he nailed it. He nailed the atmosphere and his word choice. And, you know, and and we read a lot of white authors because, Mm -hmm. but this right here, you know, if the urbanness and, I felt like some of the euphemism he used, like, I was like, this is stuff grandma and them used to say, you know, know, and and mama and them, (laughs) you know, those type of things, right? I did. And I felt so good while reading this. And Mm -hmm. I think that may have been another reason why I really enjoyed this book. Yeah. yeah. But to top yeah. that, I feel like he really and he mentioned this in the um little um uh, I guess interview he had at the end of the audiobook. He mm-hmm. blocked out some of the action scenes. He blocked it out so like you could visualize it really well. Right. Yeah. Um you, you could, could see the action, you can feel the action. He nailed the car, like the car yeah. stuff. I felt like oh I was yeah. living through like Fast and Furious or something right. like that. Yeah. Like it was so good. The action parts were also really good on top of the poignant parts. Like, yeah. 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 Did you guys do the audio or you read the book? Um, I read the I book. I read it. Read it. Yeah. Okay. We do mm-hmm. audio. And um, at one point I was driving, literally driving and listening to this book. And I was just like, <laughs> that, that Andy up. I was telling Tamara, like, you know, when they started the heist and he was like, any music on this? And he was like, he got to Annie up by MOP, and I was uh-huh. like, "Man, this is the perfect hype song." Oh, so I was driving, God. like when he would like, he said he would go fast and then release the the brake, and mm-hmm. the car was was swing. And I have two boys, so I've seen every Fast and Furious. I've seen the video games with cars. My boys loved muscle. One of my boys loved muscle cars, so I knew. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. the Cam- Camaros and the Chevelle, all those. So I'm listening and I know I'm hearing this, mm. you know. So I was like, I had the need for speed. I felt it. Yeah. I almost at one point <laughs> wanted to just play a part and tell my son, you hear this? Do you hear this? You know, like mm. he could tell that this is what let him go because, you know, uh, that's why Warren lost the race because something was leaking because you could hear it. You know, this man was a mechanic. Mm. And I could just hear, and that was another reason why I could connect because I knew some of this just from yeah. listening to my boys tinker in my garage or still has oil stains. I digress. From them. <laughs> <laughs> just, just want to drop that in. I know. Um. Yeah. <laughs> well, my, my garage still has those stains and I still have car parts in there and they're gone. But, you yeah. know, I, I felt those, those things of a mm. panic. And, and also as a, in an interview he did, he said, Cars are the great equalizer. You know, he said back in the day, and you think about it with black people, we may not, some of us may not have anything, but we'll have a car and they will soup it up. And he mm-hmm. said, you get behind that wheel and you can go anywhere. And he said, that's how, why he kind of used those cars and how they um, added things to them because I may mm-hmm. not have money, but this is my way to get where I need to go. And I'm going to, you know, um, doll it up basically and mm. that was a different perspective to me because i see a lot of guys around here with their souped up cars they may not have a house but they have their car <laughs> and it mm. kind of made me think differently about yeah, yeah. that's so interesting because like i so i like don't have that relationship with with cars like at all like yeah. i <laughs> like i've spent most of my life not driving so like those scenes where he was like oh yes and we went into the hydraulics and parking and blah blah, blah. i was like what the how the fuck what is that i was <laughs> yeah. like can i get yeah. a video next to this because like yeah. it was like kind of harder for me to visualize it because i was like i i yeah i just don't have that same relationship with cars or even with driving like i'm like if i don't have to drive i won't so oh, yeah. it was so interesting being like wow so y'all like I'm like, oh, y'all really like cars. <laughs> I was like, that's yeah. that is something. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I was like, I uh, it's not really me like that. But also too, yeah. like you know, I have lived in places where it's like, okay, like you know, there is a train system and all these different things where it's like it's a little easier to get around um, without mm. that. So yeah, so yeah, but, but well, I'm from the Motor City, so it's cars, cars, cars. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> when you're 16, what kind of car can I get? <laughs> can I get? <laughs> can I wait? Yeah. 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 Well, he said he had like a souped up car at 17, didn't he? Yeah. In the story. Mm. But yeah. And um, I was trying, I know I lost my little train of thought that fast. I can't remember. <laughs> no, you're fine. But oh, it was Black's Hot Wasteland in, in that city or that town that they lived. It was nothing but rural, open, right. you know, mm. land. So, yeah. you know, it, when we, we think about the stories, lots of dirt and fields and right. uh, milkweeds and lots of, you know, so that's right. what they did back then, you know. And I think that was another thing that I liked about this. I've never really read a story hmm. from a Black point of view about, like, Virginia and North Carolina, you, you know, because mm, yeah. Black people do exist down there. I mean, we never mm-hmm. really hear their story. And I think he even mentioned... Uh, Tamara in the interview that that's why he picked Beauregard because yeah right. yeah because yeah, you know you think it's he the wants to claim back that name as yeah. well mm-hmm. yeah. yeah because black people do live there and right. we just all we hear about is mixed the mixed breeds and the inbreeding of you know the white community and not to say that you know but it was it was just interesting to see their life. You know- that's mm. like a I I was thinking about that in a sense two things like um the way people talk about racism but the way that it's woven into the south that it's you know like you can see a confederate flag and then you're just on your way to 7-Eleven to right. get a drink like <laughs> you know it's racism is in the tapestry in a way that is different from the north but not it's more obvious you know it, it's just it, it's like um if two plus two equals four plus racism two plus two will always equal five yeah. <laughs> and it's just something you have to account yeah. for and and they, he really draws that tapestry but what i thought to your point about um focusing on this area it felt very much like a shakespearean tragedy but written mm. in america so it's like you have the tragic hero of Beauregard. You have the heroic flaw, like you said, of his hubris and other people's tragic flaws, which is like Ronnie and his avarice. You have this almost fate, but instead of in a Shakespearean tragedy, you see fate as this almost like magical, you know, spiritual thing. Fate is almost socioeconomic. Yes. Mm. Yes. Systemic racism, systemic, you know, issues with society that makes fate. And so, I think this is why I was so angry at the book because I always get mad. Like, for instance, with Romeo and Juliet, I'm like, just don't. Just don't. <laughs> date? Have you considered not dating? And so in this book, halfway through, I'm like, have you considered not Beauregard? Could you just not? And you're like, no, there's no way not to because that's the tragedy of a tragic hero. Yeah. Is that things set ahead of them. It's like you're on a clock. You know, Ooh. you can only do exactly. what is fated to happen. Exactly. Yeah, and- yeah you said... That was... That was well said, ma'am. <laughs> that was <laughs> love it, love it. And you know, and um, when you mentioned the the <clears throat> excuse me the Confederate uh, flag in the back of the truck, you know, they're used to that. Yeah. What is it yeah. like? I rather know the devil is better to know the devil that you know than one that you don't like. I'm, I'm glad to yeah. know that you're a racist because now I know how to deal with you. Oh, yeah. But, you know, up, up north, we're not really sure who are the racists yeah. were because... Uh, uh, in the last four yeah. years, you know. You yeah. know. in the last four years, see. they came out I'm of the sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. But before yeah. that, you know, you, you had them just hiding in the in the yeah. woodworks and you're working am- am- amongst them and now mm. they're just out there in the open. But in the mm. south... To see a Confederate yeah. flag, that was nothing to us. No, oh yeah. Right. Oh, someone they sucks. even said it. We they're racist. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. or he would say, We're working with racists, but they kept mm-hmm. but they worked with I mean, even when Beauregard went into the bar looking for Reggie and Ronnie, they were mm. like, What you want, boy? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And Bulger was like, girl, I'm the main character. Like, right. <laughs> take all y'all out and it's nothing. Like, <laughs> but it's so, I, I'm so glad you say that because especially being someone like a black person who grew up in the South specifically, it's so, it's, it was so familiar just kind of like, because I feel like often, you know, because I've moved to other regions of the country and stuff. And I feel like there's this idea of like, oh, well, you know, white people are just racist because like, you know, they're like not really exposed to different communities. And like, mm. you know, there's a lot of um, mm. just intra-racial communities that they grow up in and stuff like that. And I'm like, 
that don't really curl over because it's right, funny, yeah. like, it, it, especially you see it in the book where it's like, okay, like Ronnie and Reggie and all these different people, like co- not only are you around black people, but you're literally doing business with black people. You're constantly, mm-hmm. you're in these like, extremely harrowing situations with them. And yeah. yet still, mm-hmm. you yep. still have that bias. You still have that hatred, that like that desire to feel superior to someone else, despite everything going on here, despite knowing mm-hmm. that Beauregard is literally the only reason you got away with like half the shit that happened in this book. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's so, it's like this, 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 this hatred, this form of, um, this, this form of thinking that just has no real, like, there's no like logical base to it. Like, I think that's the thing. I think people try to make racism logical and like right. to a specific thing. It's and very it's just, emotional. It's not logical. It's just, yeah, it's just mm-hmm. an emotional, it's mm-hmm. just like, and, and frankly, you know, could Ronnie sure like read an anti-racism book? I, I'm sure, but like just well not because I don't know. Can not... read? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, like it's just not something that's really. It's like oh, like I like I don't mind having a transactional relationship with yeah. exactly. Like, it's not gonna exactly. go past that. Yep. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you it's all if you think about it, that comes goes back to uh, slavery. It was, exactly. You know, most of our relationships was transact. Yeah, I don't like you niggers, and I don't want you to get. I'm sorry to say that word, but you're good. You know, <laughs> yeah, but you know, they don't want to yeah. deal with it. But if it does, right. if it's dealing with money and me getting what I need to do, that's right. that's how it is. And I think even in the workplace, I'm I'm just Oof. I'm just an employee, or you're just my coworker. There's right. been many coworkers that at work you kiki in and laughing and we're in the meetings and mm. I have seen you at the jewel and I had to say the because that's what my mother my, why do older people always put the in front of <laughs> <laughs> you know like my mom they'll say reason. the Twitter the Facebook all oh. that yeah. <laughs> yeah. but you, you know I'll see you at, right, it's always the but yeah I'll see oh you at gosh. jewels or you know whatever grocery mm. store that you guys go Piggly Wiggly Kroger and you act like you don't even know me mm. Mm. Dude, we work together. I see right. you and me. You may not be in my office, but we've been in meetings together and you just ignored me. I was like, oh, that's, that's how up. you want yeah. it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Duly <Right>. noted. <laughs> <'Cause, Right. yeah. laughs> Baby, you don't even know I play this game way better than you do. Right. <laughs> Ding. Yeah. Don't play with me. But, you know, and that's <laughs> the stuff that happens. Right. And, yeah. and I think they don't realize or they think we don't realize. We know right. mm-hmm. this. This is not mm-hmm. new. At this all. This isn't new to us. Right. Literally. But if I got to work with you like that, okay. Okay. Because yeah. guess what? When you need that project, okay. Right. And yeah, I feel right. like it. When is your deadline? When is your deadline? Uh, right. Oh, tomorrow at 11.59? 11.58 and 37 seconds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play with me. I understand. Right. That's, yeah. That's yeah. 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 And that's I think we is. all I, felt that through this book. Like we know, oh, yes. like this is life. Like this is yeah. life. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And it's, and I think now that you say that is exactly probably why I connected to, because it was like he wove you know, as Akko said, how he wove all that into this story without hitting us over the head. And that probably was my connection that mm. I did feel. This is everyday stuff that we deal with. It's just, yeah. you know, he's dealing it, dealing with it with cars and a heist. But I deal with it at, at work in the office when, you know, you won't let me talk. You want to mansplain and gaslight me in the meeting, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Ooh. Yeah, looks yeah. off into the distance. Like, I'm mm-hmm. like <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Yes. Turns Amen. back to Mike. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, oh, that that is very true. Yeah, you guys have brought up some really great points. Thank to you. Connect Thank the you. Story. Did you guys connect with Kia? I mean, I felt her. Uh, I was. I, I. It's so funny you say that because I was literally about to be like, so um kind of want to talk about Kia because <laughs> yes, I, yes. I just oh my gosh so you know the circumstances that they're in again it's like I, I remember reading throughout the book I was like I, I know it's not as simple just to be like oh like just leave if you're in this relationship where you know they're like sure your individual relationship with Beauregard is fine but like yeah. he is th- by way of like how he's earning his income, like kind of putting y'all at risk and all these different things. It's like, it's, it's not as simple just to exit. And granted, they didn't necessarily go into detail about like he has professional history and things like that. So it's like, I, I felt for her 
there in this situation. I will say, I kind of like, okay. I like Beauregard's relatability, but like at the end, he kind of lost me a little bit. Cause I remember, like, for example, like when all that shit happened, where like, you know, his son got shot and his other son had to like shoot people. Like, it's like all that happened and like they're at the hospital. Like, I remember Beauregard, like, <laughs> talking about Kia's reaction and being like, oh, like Kia was so mad. Like I just like, you know, she was really pissed obviously with everything that happened. And it almost was in a way to like, kind of be like, I mean, she didn't have to say it like that though. You know, like, it, you know, <laughs> like, it, like, it, like I, I wanted to say the line was something like, oh, you know, like, like your wife knows all the things to like tear you down and things like that. And I'm just like, it's, it's not to tear you tear down. You down. Right. It's literally to communicate the absolute pandemonium you have introduced right, yeah. into these people's lives and she's not trying right. like it's not just to like be petty or hurt your feelings and also if at the end of this like okay so okay so your feelings are hurt meanwhile your son is fighting for his life your other son has, is dealing with all types of trauma kia was there for all of this attempt to kidnapping girl and you have yeah. hurt feelings mm-hmm. i don't care i don't care yeah. like right. get the fuck over it honestly yeah. i was right. just like i cannot believe you're sitting here trying to act like you have like room right now to say oh my god i was just like yeah beauregard this is um not that's not we don't okay but he has talked to him she said i mean your son was shot my other son had to kill someone to keep us from being kidnapped like what is wrong with you like you know (laughs) what is wrong with you (laughs) on some stuff she said not to get involved with in the first place she said Um, do not do it and you Mm -hmm. went and you did it if you listened to me in the first place we wouldn't be in this situation right right basically and and in the one line, uh, Tamara, what was it when uh, sh- he was saying, those are my kids too? Ooh. Oh. Like, no. <laughs> Don't pull that. Come on. She right. was like, wow. today, they my kids, motherfucker. Right. I was like, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, get out of here. about feeling it? Because I almost said, I don't care what you say, you didn't give birth to them. There's a whole difference between carrying them babies for nine months and giving birth. Yeah, you helped make those babies, and yes, they're yours, (laughs) but you didn't birth them, baby. You didn't hold them. It's a whole I really did feel that. I was, because I'm a mother, and I was like, he he said what? He better be glad he didn't get his ass whooped Mm -hmm. in that (laughs) hospital. That's what he better be glad. Girl, I was gonna say, if they're your kids too, like you are not adequately assessing the risk that you're putting them in. Mm. Like, oh, they're your kids too, but then there's still this bug Beauregard thing that you're talking about. And you don't know what kind of life you want to live. No, 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 we don't get to play Jekyll and Hyde mm-hmm. and then come back and say, Oh, these are my kids too. No, no, you, you have to take them into account the way right. yeah. you know your mom had to stay when aunt decided to take off to go. lord knows where we still don't know where where they ended up yeah i was just like that's not an argument we're not gonna that's not an argument yeah. today that's right not. And, no. and meanwhile like throughout the entire book because i peeped it i was like so kia's making all this food for the kids she's like taking mm-hmm. them to her job she's like doing all of this like child care and like household labor and stuff like that and beauregard um <laughs> Nothing. What you doing, boo? What, what, what's right. up? Oh, yeah. and, 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 and like, there was like one scene where like he came home with the boys and like made a little something. He's like, you know, I just made a dad meal. And I'm a like, hamburger helper meal. meal. Hamburger I'm helper, like, nasty. Ugh. Exactly. And I'm just oh, like, that's their favorite. Yeah, because they know that's all they're going to get from you. <laughs> mm-hmm. But exactly. you know what, though? That, even though we are talking about that, that is real. You know, it that, is real. Yeah, yeah it, it was so real that, like you said, here's, Kia, the backbone of this family, and you still don't want to listen. That toxic right. masculinity, mm-hmm. um, you know, things that they don't want to talk about. You know, big bad. I run the house, but soon as she brings you down a notch, you want to puff up. You know, right. and that's what happened. It was like here, I run this, and this, and and like she he said, yeah, she knows how to tear you down because she knows your weaknesses, but she didn't use that for wrong. She right. used it to correct right. you, you know, like, dude, what are you thinking about? Yeah. Like, yeah. you weren't and, there. And you're going to tell me because I didn't answer the phone. I, I possibly. That's why this happened. Right. Yeah. Like, that's, <laughs> it was my no. fault because I didn't answer the phone. If I had answered right. the phone, you just saved the day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So I answered the phone. They kicked down the door. Okay. So <laughs> right. what? Right. right. How? How? Right. Else could that have gone? Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. Girl, come on. Yeah. And like, at the end, I'm just like. He's like, I just don't like, and then like, okay, that was the other thing too, where I was like, 
you, the whole book, you're like, when my dad left me, I was just devastated. Like, I just didn't even know what to do, all of that. And it's like, you were literally doing, like, you're like you're repeating. repeating the same yep. behavior. And it's like, mm-hmm. you're without acknowledging that, like, this is only something you are uniquely in a situation where you can do this. Like society gives you the space to even Mm -hmm. make a decision like this, where it can somehow seem optional to like be a part of your kids' lives in like a really direct way and things like that. Not to say that like society encourages it, but it's like, Bogart, if you were a woman, this would not be, you would not be sitting here like, wow, should I like, just leave my fucking family? You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, it's not not a choice, girl. What? You don't have to just figure it out, make it work. What? And like, so you're sitting here and like kind of resting on that, like, Privilege seems like a weird word, but like just like on on that like social space to be able to kind of mm-hmm. even consider these possibilities when it's like you this should not even be something that you're considering. And I think okay, at the end of the book, did he sell the car? I can't remember. But he like, didn't. He gave he it did. to a he, damn uh, somebody to crush it. Bony. I'm like, how dare Boom. you? Right. So he didn't even <laughs> sell the shit. Like, are you nuts? <laughs> Like, could have like sold why? the goddamn car on page thirty one, and the book would have been a lot shorter. And so we did yeah. all that. Yeah. All that? Okay. Yeah. So at yeah. the end, you didn't have anything to show for it. You didn't have any <laughs> mm-hmm. more money. Nothing. So why didn't you sell the car in the end? Why did you right. just send it off to a junkyard to be crushed? Like, why did you right. do that? That doesn't make right. any sense. Yeah. Because it destroys yeah. the the whole ghost of um his dad. That's you how can say I bye felt. to the ghost without. <laughs> but I mean, that. I think it's just kind of like, you know. The destruction, even though selling it is kind of like, you know, I got rid of it, but just that whole destruction thing. And I know it, it's all poetic. They're and still whatever, not well that, off. They like, still need no. the money. They got all these hospital bills. You got a kid <laughs> that's <laughs> setting things right, on fire right. and shooting Boonie's, people. I mean, you're going to need the money. <laughs> Booney's going to sell the platinum or the whatever the stuff. Booney was going to sell that stuff. So they wouldn't yeah. have money. Oh my but God. you know when with uh, when Marcy was talking about you know that choice of men, men always have a choice to walk away, and then if a woman walks away from raising children, she's always you know kind of looked at as the bad mother. What mother would leave her mm-hmm. child? Yeah. But I also felt like um, Cosby was saying in this story sometimes when a father leaves, sometimes men don't have the tools to be a man. And it's hard for a woman. Mm. They'll say single moms. I've raised my son. But there's some tools that women don't have to raise their sons. There's just some things that women don't know um, to give their sons. And if you think about, you know, the relationship he had with his mom, it kind of, you know, he he threw a little bit in there. Not a whole lot, you mm-hmm. know, because she 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 was like he said, she was mean as arsenic. And the dad wanted to get away from her because of the mouth. And you could tell he got that line from his dad. You know, that's yeah, something definitely. that the dad said and he picked mm. up on it. I mean, the dad took him to the bar and he's up there hitting on another woman. So this man saw mm. all this toxicity right. or this negativity in his life. And with the dad not being there, you know, I think that was the things that he was trying to show in this story that he wanted to be a good dad. He didn't have the tools. He didn't really know what to do. And then mm. he's fighting against Kia, you know, even though she's a good woman to him. I feel like the author kind of wanted us to give Bolagard a pass, and I don't. I, I agree. Do you? I, yeah. For yes. which part? Yeah. For All the, of it. Did, he wanted ending. us to give him I, a pass yeah. in the end. And I agree. I That's, yeah, that's what that. it lost. That's where it lost. I feel like it was almost like this idea it was there was something poetic about Bogart. there was something it was very focused on him as the main character i think it's a blind spot i think it's mm-hmm. uh not taking in the female perspective and not just that but it's not a condemnation of this enough he's still mm. even though he like gives up on his father in the end mm-hmm. he embodies his father he takes yeah. it on there's there's a love yeah. letter to it yeah. that mm-hmm. this is out on the the perspective of the of the tragedy that he's creating and he he never there's never a moment where Beauregard realizes that he brought this on not just himself but it's like Mm. Hamlet Mm. he brought this on not just himself but everybody else and everyone is a casualty of his behavior but instead it's given this sort of like western off into the sunset (laughs) right you know like 
Right. And I agree, Tamara. That that part got me. That part, I was like, no, you don't get this ending. You don't get to do all this. And I understand you're sad. Like, yeah. you're sad that you lost Kelvin. You're sad right. that you lost there. But you you still don't see how you're the villain. In yeah. The, end. the role mm-hmm. you played in this. Yeah. 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 Definitely. And I mean, Beauregard did not know how to be a father. He didn't. But no. he, even though he didn't know how to be a father, you would think he would have learned through his own experiences, which we got to see. What not mm-hmm. to do. Like when he was a child, he killed someone. Yeah. He rolled over someone in a car. Like um, a couple someones. Like, a couple was... someones. Right. So yeah. why would you want to put your own son that's about that age in a situation where he feels he needs to burn down buildings or he feels mm. he has to shoot people? Because yeah. that's. But he tried not to. Remember, he wouldn't let his son in to his business. He tried not to. And the little, and that's the other thing. And the little boy overheard that conversation, mm. and it always happens where you think you're protecting your children. But that environment but they know more. is a see, do as I say, not as I do situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. because yeah. he was still doing other things, so he wasn't an example to his no. son. No, not at all. Mm. And and that's what I'm saying. Like even though he thought he was hiding, this little boy, he's not dumb. He knows exact. Mm-hmm. Kids know. You mm-hmm. know, just because you think yeah. you're hiding things. I mean, if you think about all of us, you know, you think your parents are arguing and they're, they're whispering or they right. know they pick up mm-hmm. on cues. And, and like he said, I overheard mama and auntie talking. And mm-hmm. um, but, you know, you, you're. Um, but that's my whole point. Like what? OK, so, for example, I was not in this type of situation, but if I heard people, my parents talking to someone saying, we're going to lose our house, we're going to lose this, this is happening. What kind of child, right. what kind of person, what what have you been around? Where have you learned yeah. that the Demand. reaction to that is to go burn mm. down a building? Like that's right. not the reaction well, I yeah. would have. No. Well, he said it was the montage uh, gene. I was like, now that I right there, I was like, that's bullshit. I call bullshit on that one. Yeah. I call bullshit on that one. Yeah. 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 I think there would have been something heroic. There, there's still something heroic about Beauregard, and and I, I think there's still there's something really realistic about the idea of like, okay, Beauregard is back to the fate argument between Booney and his father, like this is how he knows to raise a kid. And he's doing something incrementally better in the sense that he's like, I don't want to abandon you, you guys, but Beauregard doesn't have any more images. Like who's a good father in the story? I guess Eric, who ends up dying Eric? because was it? Kelvin? He helped save. No, no, no. The guy, the guy who helped, he helped deliver the baby. Ah, yes, oh. Eric. Yeah, no one oh. like, Who has like no story because he ends up getting shot because Quan and Ro- Rooney couldn't like get it together. Oh, but, yeah. um, but I'm like looking at the story and I'm like, there, I w- there's no juxtaposition of someone who fathers differently. So Beauregard mm. has no other idea of how, and, and that's what I mean by the way fate can lock us in and i think that's what he means when he's talking about his father and this as like a family gene it's not a really a gene but it's the inevitability of not having the tools anybody else yeah and the systemicness and people i mean obviously the only thing that gets me is like in real life people do people do find a way to be different than their forefathers like Mm -hmm. and i think we to me i the people in my life who i've seen like that i i have such a respect for them because to overcome that is without it, it's just astounding anyway yeah. yeah you're right and and that's the thing it's like there are people who do have that choice but it, it, it's a choice it's like do you want to or do you enjoy mm. you know and i think too that's where we were kind of in this story they he kind of touches on that like i i like being yeah bug bug yeah. you know i like it and and I think that was the, at that end. He was like, I kind of like the fast life, even though I mm-hmm. want to be a good dad. And then, you know, Kia calls him out on his bullshit. And she, you know, it's um, like, hey, you could do this if you want to. And those boys are going to hate. I don't have to say anything. They're going to mm-hmm. hate you on your own. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I do wonder, like, is this going to be a part two to this book? Is he going to try? And, mm-hmm. and then I'm like, do I really want I don't want a part I, two. I don't, I don't want, want, I don't want it. I don't either because I'm kind of <laughs> like. Sorry. I, don't, I enjoyed the book, but I don't want any more. I don't I'm either okay. because I kind of even know, I think somebody said they didn't like the ending because it wasn't, it was kind of left 
open ended, but I think well, like this conversation that we're having is so good because it, you know this is some of the things that happens in the black community with our black men and and women and you know this woman could possibly be a single mother even though I felt like she was a single mother even though he provided for her financially right. she felt there were many times where she was placed in a single mother situation you know like you said she's taking yeah. him to, to school and taking him to pick him up and you know he would pick him Honestly. up and he would cook every once in a while but yeah. I, I did like that final that family dynamic that he did show because he showed mm. he did show Kia as a strong woman he did do that in this I will give him that he gave you know that was probably one of the strong well probably the only you know mom was strong willed I won't say she was portrayed as a strong woman mm. yeah I think that yeah because even Jenny also had like motivations Kia had motivations the thing that gets you about Kia okay this is like <laughs> maybe a source spy. I understand and maybe this is a reflection of reality. I was like, how is every man in this story dark? And every oh! woman in this story is light <laughs> yes. skinned uh, with light eyes. Come on. Uh, part, man. I was like, I don't That's know about classic, all this. man. Oh, I hate mm-hmm. that. Right. Hate I was it. Like, y'all really were gonna do this again. And even his son, and but strangely, like his son has light eyes but dark skin. I was like, you really couldn't have made the boy a <laughs> light skin with light eyes. Like, come on, really? And it was just yeah. To me, it was like um, I meant to look up his I, wife in real life. Mm, S. A. Crosby's ooh, let me uh, his wife. Yeah, because I was wondering look it up, Marcy, about that. Tell us. Yeah, I was. <laughs> that was something I was see. thinking about because in the story, his mom has gray eyes, and that's where Ariel yeah. got her gray eyes. And I was like, really? right. It just yeah. He couldn't and get a Lapita like, or one of us. You know, Akko or I see you got right. your, your beautiful brown over there. <laughs> you know, like why <laughs> why can't we be represented? in these damn right. books. Right. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm not going to lie. His sister, she was a thick sister with some hair. I was like, come on now. Could you right. give us some of this? But, yeah. It- and it just made, but then I thought about okay. In reality, since we do have this colorism issue in America about lighter skinned women and 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 black men thinking them, you know, a, a prize, but then also with that that sexism of making her do all this emotional labor and mm. not telling her things and not thinking she's smart enough to handle things, I'm like, man, this is a double sided sword that cuts both ways, and yeah. it's none of us win in this dichotomy because Beauregard is not telling her stuff she needs to know and is treating her like this sort of prize, but then is not affording her agency, you know, and is, oh, I just was so frustrated. So I was frustrated on a meta level because I was like, so you can't have any dark skinned people. But then I was frustrated in the book because I was like, what is this sexist? Anyway. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Like, I feel like you could have at least shown your wife some respect if you're going to mm. go off and do these things and like shit hits the fan, fucking tell her shit has hit the fan. Right. Right. Like, you're out dancing and people are looking at you and she's like, what's wrong? I know something's wrong. No, huh? Just, mm-hmm. just go home, go home. Right. Right. They could have took off and avoided that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because you know oh. how they say some things. And I know like at work, like if my boss knows something is about to go down, he won't tell me because he's like, he's protecting me because some things, if I don't know, I can't say, if I say, I don't know, I don't know, because he has not gave me that information. Mm. But in this story, this woman knows, right. she may right. now not know everything, but she knows the basis of your life and your back, your lifestyle outside of the, mm-hmm. uh, right. the mechanic you are. So why are you? trying to protect her protect her if anything if you'd have told her she he was going on that that second heist maybe she would have answered her damn phone Mm -hmm. maybe she would have you know learned how to shoot a gun maybe she could have been your bonnie to your clock come on right you know she could have protected or she could have got the kids and got out of dodge while he was taking care of this last bit right yeah you're right before all of this happened right because um you're right, because Lazarus even told him before they did that second heist, if you don't get this right, I'm killing mm-hmm. my family. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you're right. I would have got my family out because who knows? Shit happened the first time. 
Mm-hmm. But right. it's the hubris. Yeah. It's like you said, Classy, it's the hubris again. Yeah, he overconfidence. thinks he's smarter. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God. Mm-hmm. This, this story is a lot more complex than I thought. Yeah. God, yeah. You guys have really brought out some really <laughs> good points. I, man, some things I never even thought to think about with this story. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank Appreciate you. it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Marcy, did you find his wife? What are they? What are what are they? A couple. Uh, I was. Like? I'm <laughs> looking, and I, I cannot find. <laughs> cannot find his wife, unfortunately. Um, but I can I can follow up with y'all. But okay. I would not be surprised. <laughs> yeah. If you know, it's kind of a right. I wonder too. Like, is she white yeah. or is she a light skinned woman? Because you know, he does have the biracial child in the story. I did think about that too. And I mean, mm. not to say it's wrong, but. Come on, bro. Your mama, your mama is black. Come on. Like it's just. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Just a, again. Yeah. Sorry. No, go ahead, Marcy. Go ahead. Yeah, just like that. I don't know. Just like that weird coded like beauty is capital kind of. I don't yeah. Know, like positioning of like oh like all the women like it's 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 like to associate Kia with being like this relatable character, even Ariel or his mom or whatever. Like we have to give them these like certain features, features right so that like yeah. they can be more i don't perhaps sympathetic seen as innocent exactly. yeah seen as worth protecting right you know? there's something unexamined about it that irritated me right and so um, i don't know i'm just yeah i'm definitely kind of like beauregard sister and we gotta this ain't this ain't it like it's just like i and like again it's then, just, that very antiquated idea of like oh i'm giving y'all money so like doing my job and i'm like that's but kia mm. also works yeah. it takes right. the kids to work she works multiple yeah. jobs actually so yeah yeah she does what do we bring it to the table exactly you know what i mean mm-hmm. like it's like i don't okay yep okay but regard sure yeah your job isn't just money right like right. that's not that's not what a family structure is about right You're not an atm right <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> Mm. but yes so. hamburger helping making atm anyway sorry well i don't know i kind of felt like some of those scenes with kia he kind of felt she was a sexual atm i kind of just felt like i don't know i just mm. didn't feel the closeness you know i just felt like mm. i don't know but the romance I tried, the connection. I tried not to read into it too much but i'm like i don't know <laughs> this just doesn't feel like yeah yeah no, I think that's accurate. There's something like, oh, this is what a man does. He has a light-skinned wife and yeah. he has his kids and he protects them, capital P, and I will do anything to that. And you're like, all right, let's think about this. Like, let's get away from the scripts of your life and think about it because that's partially fate, right? Mm-hmm. You're giving into the systemic racism. You're giving into the systemic scripts about masculinity and all those things decide your outcome. Mm-hmm. But what if you had turned away for a second and thought more individually or more nuanced, perhaps... What a say to everybody's life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or even, I mean, this is, yeah. <laughs> this is a little petty, but even just like the casual <laughs> scenes were like, I, remember, I I feel like this happened right before they almost got kidnapped. But like, you know, they came to the house and Kia was just like casually just only wearing one of Beauregard's shirts. It was just like, mm-hmm. oh, like he was just, she was always just like wearing something of his and the, this weird, I don't know. It was just always It was very, that like, Beyonce feel. Yeah. Just like this I like kind of sexual. T-shirt. <laughs> right and then it's like and then there's i think there's a there's a message there's like subtext there around just like property and ownership right yeah. like it's just like this idea of like she's mm-hmm. always wearing something of yours something that belongs to you is it and like by extension she as a person belongs to you in this way or like that's kind of how you perceive her and it's like but regard um are we not <laughs> it's like i need you to uh, uh, like examine that and acknowledge that like that's yeah i just yeah it's yeah, yeah it's yeah Especially, too, I think this ride or die, I don't know. I was listening to that Tiny and T.I. story the other day, and I was like, <laughs> this ride or die stuff, this isn't where it's at. This isn't where Period. it's at. And it's, especially if you're looking at Kia's life, you're like, you know, it, like you said, Classy, like, she's a single mother in most things with the added burden of worrying that someone's going to call and tell her that her husband's dead yeah. and maybe someone's going to show up at her house and kidnap her yep. and her kids. Scary. Yeah. Very scary. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, no. this might be an unpopular opinion, but I feel like the ride or die thing might have been necessary in the past. You know, it might have been mm. necessary back then when there weren't a lot of choices for women. But mm-hmm. now I want off this fucking ride. I'm not going to stay on it. <laughs> but you know what? Yeah. <gasps> but I wonder, too, was that a part of the story? Because they were in like this poor rural 
town Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. without too many opportunities. I mean, when you think Mm -hmm. about it, he even talked about how at the beginning, all these what was the one co- uh, company that came in and promised to, to give all these jobs and the jobs oh, right. went um, overseas. So yeah. mm. I do wonder if he tried to, and not to say like with their relationship, but you know, she was a um, house, not a housekeeper, but a custodian in a hotel, mm. right? Or housekeeper right. in a hotel. And then she did a side job. So, you know, I just wonder because nobody really had any professional okay. jobs yeah. Yeah. in that yeah. town. So, yeah. I, I just oh, wonder, but no. yeah, you're right with that, the ride or die that used to be back in the day because women didn't have opportunities, but now they do. But in this book, I'm not even sure because he even mentioned uh, Kia's sister when she was a hairdresser and he was wondering how she made all this money. I was like, you fucker. Mm, right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, you little fucker. What you got to say? Because then I was like, I'm thinking, what, does she have a drug dealing huh? a boyfriend no, or something? And yeah. then I'm like, no, this woman is a entrepreneur yeah yes. she's just a hairdresser yeah. and, you're like, and i'm thinking to myself how the hell can you question life. somebody and you're living a double life so you right. know what i did have some issues with some those are history. some blind spots yeah those yeah. little nuances those are, yeah. those are some blind spots of the author i think maybe some yeah. of his own assumptions and mm-hmm. you know and it comes out in the writing because you you write what you know right you, mm-hmm. Yep, and so, I did. I did. He pissed me off with that one. I was like, "She, because she works, right?" Yeah. <laughs> and every and day. also it's every funny day too that <laughs> and their bills, right, right. <laughs> and it's funny too because I, I mean, at the same time, Beauregard had his own business that was struggling. So it's like, okay, mm-hmm. so it's so easy for you to look at her and be like, "How she got all this money?" Like, mm-hmm. oh my god, like it's just like, okay, so you're clearly mm-hmm. mad about your own economic station. You're probably mm-hmm. making it about masculinity in this weird way about like, I need to provide and my yeah. worth as a man and. Yeah. yeah. Ugh, I'm just like, girl, I'm tired. Like, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. Also, while we're speaking about the author, this is okay. This is something that I I've never actually talked about this before. I guess on like the podcast. Um, Ooh. but I always kind of struggle when there's just like really like bigoted language in a book to like yes. add like grit or like kind of a sense of um urgency to what's going realness. on right yeah. like realness but it's like completely kind of unexamined like throughout the book there's just hella sexist hella homophobic like all times mm-hmm. just like just fat phobic like all time just like every form of bigotry that exists yep. i feel like you there was a lot of just casual like throwing around of certain terms and just like ways of dehumani- dehumanizing people which I, I, which I guess is like congruent with sort of like the value structure that the characters held, but it was also something that I'm like, I always look at the author kind of a little sideways. I'm like, yeah. So why we? Why, why, why is it so easy right. for you to uh, say all these slip things? Into right, just yeah. like slip into it so easily. Like I'm like, is it like? I understand. Sure, you might be trying to build a certain environment, but like, I'm always it's, like, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of, it can, it can, it can, it can hit a little, a little different. So. Yeah. Yeah, I thought the same thing because uh, it was based in 2012. Same. The the setting was 2012. Mm-hmm. I do get because when I um, heard the first word that was mentioned, which may have been Dyke, maybe I think he was referring to Lisa, you yeah. know, the 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 jewelry owner um, who basically gave the secret away about the diamond and i'm mm-hmm. like ooh, because we we talked about this um in a previous book you know they were talking about mental health and some other things and i'm like in this environment in this time why do you handle it like that and i mm-hmm. get that he was trying to say we're in the backwoods and this is the way the backwoods people talk you know this is us and it's mm-hmm. set us and it's like <laughs> but dude yeah. if you're selling books Right. You got to be politically, you know, you be sensitive to some of these things. Mm-hmm. You could have done this in a totally different way and got the same message across. Right. And, oh, sorry. Yeah. oh, no, no, no. Go. But that's how I felt. And when I heard it, I was like, OK, maybe it's going to hit once. And then he said another one. I was like, right. Damn, mm-hmm. And then he did it again. And I was like, yeah, like, I know. Oh, yeah. Ronnie is a bigoted, ignoramus, but. Damn essay. <laughs> right. You could have did it differently. And right. I will say this. I noticed that when it came to like, you know, particularly like, you know, the N-word and stuff, like they would say it between black people, but mm-hmm. never I don't remember a moment where a white well, they, person 
they did once, but then he beat him up. Yeah. Remember when he came for us? Mm, yeah. Right. So yeah. there was like a very clear retaliation there, a very clear kind of like, oh, actually, you got me fucked up. And, mm-hmm. and, and aside from that, it was like, you know, they would like white people call him like boy and things like that. He's like kind of more like coded, not subtle, mm-hmm. but like, you know, these are like more like coded things. And I'm like, I feel like a similar level of nuance could have been explored with other identities. Um, mm-hmm. That one that really I'm just going to presume that you did not hold. Um, just saying. So yeah. I was like, no, I, I think that's accurate. <laughs> yeah. So, I, think I mean, yeah. you bring Lisa in there and you bring her in and take her out without us really exactly. needing to know the crux of her. Because, I mean, she was dirty. She was, you know, she was, I won't say in the syndicate, but she was in the crime life as well. Yeah. She wasn't just a jewelry oh. store owner yeah, or an employee. So, yeah, mm-hmm. it, he, he could have explored a whole lot. So, yeah, yeah. as Tamara yeah. said, you think about that. You write what you know. Yeah. Right. And, and then I'm thinking spot. too, like, what editor didn't say, hey, <laughs> right. Where's oh. the nuance behind Lisa? <laughs> like, right. Or, or those words like, dude, no, nah. you know, yeah. I think you may need to change this. You know, yeah. maybe you need to change this word. Or at least it's not even like, why isn't not even giving Lisa a chance to react to these slurs? Being, mm. Like, you know, that's very disembodying. Like, right. yeah. You don't think she enjoys it's like why would she like she doesn't enjoy being called a slur <laughs> like right. why not give her the agency yeah. to respond you know? right mm-hmm. yeah yeah exactly yeah or so. even um when he talked about or the author wrote about i guess was it rodney ronnie who came in and reggie was sleeping with the girl who was fat or something you remember yeah. that I'm like, it just seemed like, why are you right? Like, this girl just seemed sloppy fat, according to the, like, how he wrote it. Right. It just, I'm like, right. what? No agency. Yeah. yeah. They were talk- right. Yeah. And even, like, the one guy, the, yeah, it was, it was some fat was, shaming. And- yeah. Oh, it's just, not a fat, yeah. 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 It was. Clearly, he does not, the author does not like fat women, or clearly. I mean. Well, yeah. No I don't know. That's himself, my own opinion. Who, my opinion. <laughs> he's no small fry either, so he's got... Uh, I, I know if you saw him too. on that. Interview. Are you are you eating gummy bears right now? No, I need a cough drop. I, I'm, oh, uh, <laughs> I was like, I was like, no, can I have I'm some? sorry. I, I, I can feel my throat <laughs> getting really uh, mm. scratchy. We had. Are you guys in New York? I'm in Atlanta. Okay. Oh, no. yeah. We just had a. Me too. I'm oh, visiting. Shit. I'm visiting. <laughs> right I don't now? live here. My sister oh, lives okay. here. <laughs> yeah. So I got oh, screams to the mic. Oh, my bad. Our temperatures. We have a negative. Eight degree. Oh, never. Wait, right. where are you at? Because I'm in Minneapolis. And it's I'm, negative oh, 50. I know. Yeah. You're I'm in uh, Illinois, uh, and we had a snowstorm, and I've been mm. out shoveling and all that, and I have asthma, Ooh. and I can feel my. Uh, I'm losing my voice slowly, so I was like, mm. let me try and sneak one in and maybe kind of get it out. But somebody busted me. And then I was like, <laughs> oh, you, you <laughs> got gummy bears. Like AKA Marcy. Like, share the candy. <laughs> Virtually, like this could be special candy, but it's not. It's a Ricola. (laughs) I did not uh, need to put you on blast like that. Yeah, you did. (laughs) But yeah, yeah, he did. He there was um some negative. Yeah, the the fat shaming and uh, you know the other terms because I don't know. I don't want to be um, speak incorrectly, but yeah, I did. I I uh, cringed. When I heard yeah. those, mm. I was like, just because she fat doesn't mean anything because it because apparently it is not stopping from her getting her yeah. stuff smacked. So shut mm. up, sir. She she's right. getting yeah. some. Right. But I'm like, yeah, I was like, really? You had to go there. And then, like, yeah. And just like compare the way that she's talked about and the way Alice has talked about or like kaya has talked you know, or even mm. Jenny has talked about like there's right. clearly a value judgment being made. And you're like. Wait, how? What does this have to do with the book? Right. <laughs> like, especially, yeah. espe- okay, and this the okay, especially for these like side inconsequential sort of one-off characters. It's yes. like okay, girl, like this. Yeah, this woman is barely in the story, and we doing all this, like yeah. make, mm-hmm. cracking all these jokes, doing all this, and I'm like, so. It's also a stereotypical why? shortcut. You yeah, know? like it's a way to con. It's a way to rely on certain. 
um, imagery that society already has prominent. Mm. But the, what's interesting is you're trying to nuance the black male experience, right? Like that's the whole point of the book. Like we, black men have an image in society. And you're saying, no, that's not right. Like, let me show you Beauregard from his perspective, the nuance of him, the socioeconomics that puts him in that situation. Right. And then you fail <laughs> to do that with the, the other, other characters. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's yeah. What stings, I think. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah they were like used as a little crutch. It, yeah. And, and mm-hmm. like you said, they were really small characters and this is what you do to them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the other wow. one was like a prom queen, it, you know, the one who ever mm-hmm. Ronnie wanted to date. She was revered. And yeah. I, yeah. Those. It made me cringe. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Although I guess in the end, Jenny was dead and Anne, the girl that they were sleeping with it was alive so good on you Anne. i mean i guess <laughs> you look to the end of the book jenny was killed in the mo- like the, like she left her house she was driving someone like, uh. turned around followed her and they're like t- a p- hundred pages later oh yeah girl jenny died like she Jenny's- died off screen off page <laughs> oh, no, like, damn, that like, we can't even get the scene like i was like i was like oh my god what's gonna happen with jenny and like in a nope. one-off line they're like oh yeah jenny's gone girl like, yeah, don't, yeah. Don't. the cadillac yeah. followed her and that was it that was that, that. It- that part got me. I was like, because Jenny knew it was up. That was right. when you were watching some a slow motion, you know, accident. I was like, Child. she yeah. knew. She said, Ronnie, don't talk to me. Give me the money. She get got out in of her here. car. I was like, got that yeah. Jenny's going to get out. And no. Mm-hmm. I was hoping she would get away. I mean, I'm like, me she too. killed me that too. guy. She got, let her get away. Right. Then, right. Like, oh, no. no. Yeah. No such luck. <laughs> <sighs> so. Oh, that's a lot, guys. Oh my god, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. So a lot I of emotions. Guys, yeah, no, I know you guys um read it, but me and Classy listened to the audiobook. So I did want to comment on the audiobook narrator for one second. Okay. Because yeah, it's of so important, I feel like. And I know that they tried to get us into the feeling of being in the South and stuff. And I think mm-hmm. the narrator was good, but he talks so slow. Oh, my God. Every <laughs> word. I'm like, oh, my God. So I had to, like, speed it up to 1.8. <laughs> and Not I 1. never. 8. Yes. I yeah. never <laughs> listened that fast, but I could yeah. not. Any, uh, It was just so slow. Yeah, it was mm. dragging ass. I did the same. <laughs> It was. It was. And then it I did it up to 1.82. And and Sam and I text, you know, every once in a while. And she was like, I had to do it, to, you know, increase. And I said, so did I. She's like, oh God, that is so funny. Cause I usually don't go over 1.5 because then it starts sounding like the um, like a chipmunk or a something. Little, yeah, yeah, the chipmunks. Yeah. Yeah. Robotic almost, yeah. And yeah. then I had to turn my phone off today because it froze and when I booted it back up and tried to, and fin- to finish the book, it went to one whole camera. <laughs> oh my sure. God. It was <laughs> it was it was awful. It was yeah. and I was like, who sounds like that at one point at one speed? It was just bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but he did you good know. but it was just so i mean his voice and he the different voices but it was just like they don't if talk i had that, to talk so. to someone in real life that talked at that speed it oh would be God. everything in me to keep my my face straight and not be like could you speed it up i mean <laughs> <laughs> saying oh my gosh yeah Yeah. it's so it's so funny you say that because i literally i so i got the book from the library and funny enough look at the universe like i literally just had a conversation with akko where she was like oh like i read the you know did this audiobook recently and i was like let me get into audiobooks let me see what's up so i like found blacktop wasteland like on youtube so i like started listening you say youtube i'm sorry yeah it was on youtube oh really Yeah. Yeah. yeah So mm-hmm. I listened for like forty five seconds, and I was like, "Nah, I'm a." Oh. I, mean, I, I, I wonder what speed like, they had it on. Truly pulled out my library card and was like, "Okay, yeah. let me just get this in person because <laughs> I what I cannot do this I cannot yeah. do it. I must read it. right because like, you what? can't get those hours back. You cannot. Mm, no. yep. mm-hmm. I was like, and the whole thing was like nine ten hours i was like oh no what i won't be doing okay <laughs> 11 yeah, hours Let me just... yeah but on 1.8 it kicked it down to like eight hours or yeah, something yeah. I was like... <laughs> yeah i'm curious now like what speed did they have it on 
at, on YouTube. I didn't realize that they do some YouTube uh, audio books. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not sure uploaded. Kind of lot. Huh? <laughs> yeah, not sure how That's legal true. it was, but it, it was on YouTube. Um, we're not talking hmm. about legality here, man. <laughs> oh, we're, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're talking about, just, just, <laughs> talking about but, illegal stuff in this audio <laughs> this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh but, um, yeah. but yeah but all around though like you know certainly a lot to discuss and i will say that like i was like okay like y'all did y'all did y'all did something it was a very much very yeah. much a page turner very very interesting mm-hmm. and like i said like the thrilling part of it i was like oh girl i cannot even put this down this is so yeah, yeah. very interested to see what 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 happened okay yeah. well it sounds like the perfect time to rate it what do you guys think you ready to rate it Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll let you guys <laughs> I go was like, first. yeah. <laughs> I, go, I go, why don't you go first? Tell us what you rated the book. And we like to go at, on, on this podcast. We do like good read style. So one to five, no halves. So it could be. No halves. Okay. Good oh, no halves. Oh, no. no that's halves. Gonna be- <laughs> Make yeah. it hard. <laughs> okay. I'll put it at a. Uh, I'll put it at a four. I want to put you at a three and a half, but I'll put you at a four. <laughs> um, because I, I think it's really good. But for the reasons I talked about, it's not entirely grasping at the other characters and not giving Borgoid enough of a, uh, of a moment of realization of just how much he's done to everything and everyone is a four. But, but yeah, that's what I would say. Mm. Okay. What about you, Marcy? It's so funny because I was I was actually going to say a three for the same reasons. <laughs> um, just because, yeah, like it's like I it's it's hard because it's like it's I do recommend it, but yeah, I, I I guess I feel like sort of the social commentary I do wish there was more there. Um, and it's not to say that like I didn't like like I still liked the book, but yeah, I would just say mm-hmm. for those reasons I would I would probably give it a three and would still recommend it, but just kind of give the caveat of like by the way, yeah. yeah. Some things in the mm. some content warning. No, right yeah. beforehand, mm. but but yeah. So I would say like a three. Uh, damn, here I thought I was gonna be harsh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm actually just gonna give it a star. Actually, like, <laughs> but um, no. no, no, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. Yeah, I'll give it a three. Okay, what about you, Classy? I'm gonna give it a four. Um, I was at the beginning of this podcast like a five. I, it was wonderful oh my god why are we yeah. thinking the same okay go ahead Sorry. yeah because you know what because you know how we are it's, yeah. it's really spooky but yeah. after having this conversation yep. and listening to everyone's point of view i began to see um other things like um i forgot about the 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 um the things that you mentioned like the content warning for you know the fat shaming and the the um, homophobic, you know, those type of things. And Mm -hmm. um, I said, I would be remiss not to drop at a point because just last month I talked about a book that grind my nerves about mental health and, you know, Mm -hmm. women and how, Mm -hmm. you know, you pit women against women. And then I'm thinking to myself, how dare I give him, you know, the courtesy of giving him a five. Um, mm. I gave him a four because, like I said, I did connect. His writing was uh, beautiful. I love, I loved his word choices, his style, the speed. I could feel it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is why I am giving him a four. Um, you know, there was just, you know, he used a lot of euphemisms that I had to look up, and I feel mm. like when I read, I want to learn, and I did learn some things. And yeah. If I don't learn, I'm just like, eh, you know, I do. I do. I do. Right. When I read, I feel like you should be taking me to some place that I haven't been. Mm. And mm. even though I felt a connection with him, I learned so much. And I learned so much from you two as well, which is why I dropped it from a five to a four. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I'm kind of in the same boat. When I finished the book... And I, my first instinct was, wow, that was pretty good. You know, I was kind of feeling hyped off the ending. Like, hmm, I was like feeling all the feels. And I really enjoyed like the action parts. I enjoyed the writing of like the fights and stuff. Mm. It, I did think the the, uh, the start was a little slow. But yeah. once things got moving, I was like on board for it. I thought the pacing yeah. mm-hmm. was good. I thought, you know, like the action was good. But when I was reading, I did have a couple of, hmm, 
okay, I'll keep re- oh, okay, keep reading. <laughs> and then when we <laughs> when we talked about it, it kind of you guys were able to verbalize a lot of the feelings I was having and brought forward some of the problems that the book had. Yeah. <laughs> so it was not a perfect book by any means, but it was entertaining nonetheless. And yes, I could definitely. actually visualize this as like a movie adaptation, really. I think it would yeah. be good on oh, screen. Same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So with that, I mean, I'm going to give it a, a four. It's a solid four. And I probably would, I would recommend it to people who already enjoy these types of books. So if you're used to reading like maybe crime, you know, crime and, mm. you know, in the South or, you know, cause yeah. I don't read a lot of this type of book where it's in yeah. real rural areas with, yeah. Mm. It's called like know. noir, some some kind yeah. of southern noir. So yeah, yeah, Ooh, southern noir, right? Yeah, and like you said too, with the content warn- warning, because I know they do yeah. that now, and this would have definitely been um, warranted. To yeah, content, definitely a content warning. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But it was good. I I liked. Um, yeah. I and I like that I caught the author, you know, with his interview at the end. I think that kind of got me a little bit more interested in what I was reading and watching Mm. him on his little zoom call. I think it was like a week ago he was on Mm -hmm. like the the thriller authors of America had this little thing and he was on there. Is that what the group is? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, So that got me interested. I was excited to start reading the book after I saw him. So, Mm -hmm. because I'm not going to lie when I, when this book, when we picked this book, I was like, okay, I'll try it. You know, <laughs> I wasn't like, yeah, let's do it. I was like, right. okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, good stuff. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes, I know. Did you have like a... I like a recommendation if you guys like this, which we, I guess we did, but P Valley on Stars. Um, it's also set in the South. Yeah. Um, takes place in the strip club. It's like very good. I don't know if it's noir, but it has that same intrigue. It same- does. Yeah. I like P Valley. Yeah. I didn't think I was, but wow. It's well, okay. Man. Yeah, it's, it's well written. Yeah. I, who? Yeah. So, yeah. And they, yeah, it's done well. It's a yeah. very, I can't wait for because like, come on, season two, come on. Right, right. Oh <laughs> okay. I'm going to yeah. have to check that out. I haven't seen it. So, yeah, don't be fooled by just, and it, that's how I felt like I'm not watching a movie about strippers. And it's a movie, it's directed by women, and you can tell that is directed by mm-hmm, women because exactly. they don't mm. sexual, you know, they're already sexualized just being strippers, but she goes into the backstories of these women. Like, why are mm. they doing this? And they're, you know, the lifestyle. Motivation. And, yeah. And mm. um, it, it is it, it, like I could say, I recommend it as well. It's a good story. Yeah. Cause at first you, when you first see it, you're like, okay, okay. And then all of a sudden you're hooked. Like yes, I binged yeah. it. Mm. I binged okay. it. Yes. Yeah. By episode two, you're like, okay, let me get to episode three. And then, like you said, once you get to the end, you're like, let me get to the second season. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Is it, where is it Good. on? Is it on HBO or Stars? Like, stars. 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 Okay. Yep. Stars. Okay. I got to get, I got to figure that out. Okay. It's been I know. Like, I let go I'm of like, stars like, after stars. they ended Oof. their season. And I'm just like, okay, when it starts back up, right. <laughs> I'll get stars again. But right now, <laughs> there was nothing on stars that I needed to see. So nice. Yeah. Fair. Okay. Well, this was a fun conversation. Thanks, guys, for it coming was. on. I appreciate you for doing it. Of course. Of course. Thank you, Likewise, again. Thank you so much for having it, us. It was so very good. fun. Very fun. <laughs> Can't wait to get to your book. Yeah. Well, speaking of which, let's, let's share what we're going to be talking about on your podcast. Um, what book did you guys present for us? We And we picked. What was it? Um, yeah. It was um, it was Mexican Gothic. Yes. That's been on my list Monica, forever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we literally so funny. We like did we literally just recorded part one of that like uh-huh. right before this call. So okay, so yeah, so we were just thinking, yeah, of having y'all on when we record in like two weeks and yes. just get into all of it because I have a lot of thoughts and I feel like it's just yep. gonna, it's just gonna get wild at the end. Like, I just have a <laughs> feeling I was like, oh, this book is about it's a slow burn, but I'm like, I feel like it's gonna get yeah quick. I so. oh, I started it a little bit because my mm-hmm. library provided it for me and. You know how, I don't know, you know, with your library, they're like, at first they were saying 10 weeks. I was like, okay, so I got time. Well, it yeah. opened up quicker. So I started it. And then Tamara's like, it's kind of early. Don't you want to wait? So, <laughs> I mean, so I got like 20% in and I'm just uh-huh. like, like you said, it is a slow burn. I'm like, 
what's happening? What is happening? So I returned it and Libby has, I don't know. Do you guys have Libby? Libby. What, what is yeah, that? I have your over- it's like a lot. Yeah, through overdrive and whatever. Well, now they, they've updated the app where if you return it and you could just, um, if you return it early, you can put yourself in line again, but you can pick a date. So I was able to pick oh. a date so I can go back and get it. But now that I've read the 20%, now I'm going to go back and research more of what is gothic, the gothic mm. genre, because I'm clueless because it's interesting, but I think I want to know more of what is gothic. So okay. that kind of helped me to make me be prepared for your podcast. Yeah. Mm. Well, I can't wait. I'm excited now because like I said, that's been on my list for a minute, probably yeah. since it came out. So yeah. this yeah. is a great opportunity for me to finally get it done. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. And it's yeah. so funny you mentioned the library because yeah, my <laughs> library literally, <laughs> it's like this whole drama, but basically like there were like, I think when I put in my request, like 40 something holds on the mm. book. And I was mm. like, so I put the request in back in like September, October, like it was like months ago and it came out like earlier than I wanted it to. So I like, and like they, they're doing this whole thing where like, I cannot believe I'm telling all of this. It, they, they're doing this whole <laughs> thing where like, you know, usually when you check out a book, it's like you can renew it up to three times. You can have it for three weeks at a time, all of that. Um, but since this book is so popular, like they just give you that first three weeks and that's it. Oh, and then you're supposed yeah. to return it. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, well, girl, I still need it. So I'm going to just keep it. And my library <laughs> is steady blowing me up. Like, oh, no. this is your fourth overdue notice. Mama, we need this no. book. What that are you doing? Funny. And I'm like, <laughs> And I'm like, I'm almost done. Damn, give me like two more weeks. <laughs> so I'm like beefing with my library. Oh, like, no. <laughs> they're going to come for that book. They're going to show right. up at your door. Right. Like, no, that yes. no, like literally like, oh, snatch it from my hands, like for real. So don't that be surprised when we funny. record if someone just pops up and is like, so we actually need this book. Like we yes. need it now, actually. So They are like, unass that book. Marcy, right. unass it. <laughs> <laughs> so a mess. But but yes, but I'm super excited to talk about it with y'all because... <laughs> Mm-hmm. The library police are going to get you. That's all I Definitely. need to know. <laughs> oh, they will. They're coming for me. But, <laughs> right. you know, I'm, I'm going to give it to them. I'm going to give it to y'all. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I got it. Just, just give me a little bit. Because yeah. also, to be fair, y'all should just let me renew it like the other books. But it is what it is. Whatever. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> so, not me literally posting up for the library. But anyway. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah. That's so. funny. All right. Well, again, thanks, guys. We appreciate you. And we look forward to being on your podcast. Of course. Yes. Of course. Yes. Can't wait to have y'all. Yes. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye. 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 Take care. All right. That was fun, y'all. It was. That was fun. Hope you enjoyed that. Having special guests. We might have to have other special guests on once in a while. Yeah, that was fun. Yes. enlightening and um, different points of views. It's just yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Okay, that's it for today's show. We appreciate you for being here and especially listening to this longer episode. And as always, we look forward to talking with you inside of Shelf Addiction Official about this book during our book club meeting. And lastly, don't forget you can check out this after show available on Patreon right now. Happy reading. Take care, guys. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review or like this episode on your favorite podcast player. It seems so simple, but it really helps me out. You can share this podcast with other book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. You can also join the Shelf Addiction Patreon family. For as little as $2 a month, you will help us produce even more awesome content for your ears. You can also consider joining the Shelf Addiction official Facebook group where we talk all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. You can also reach us via email at info at shelfaddiction.com. Thank you for listening.